39 minutes past the hour. Honored to be joined on the Sunrise Morning Show right now by former Congressman Frank Wolf. He's now a member of the Congressional Advisory Board to In Defense of Christians. Congressman, thank you for joining us today. Good to be with you. Thank you very much. It is good to have you. And the State Department recently revealed the latest list of countries of particular Concern Now, for those not familiar with this list, Congressman, what is it and what does it mean for the countries that are on it? Well, it's very significant. Mainly, they're dictatorial, brutal, bad countries. This is, I think, one of the first times that a, quote, democracy has ever been on the, a list, Nigeria. I'm grateful to Secretary Pompeo and Ambassador Sam Brownback for putting them on the list because... Frankly, Nigeria is a corrupt government. We see what's taking place. Boko Haram, a terrorist group, is active there, uh, which has actually killed more Christians in Nigeria than all of the people were killed by ISIS in Iraq and Syria combined. You also have the Fulani militants there, and the government has done very little. So this will enable uh, tough sanctions to be be put on. Uh, Perhaps foreign aid will be cut. A lot of different things can can be done, but this really elevates it and puts our government clearly to their government. You better change or else serious replications are going to come about. How long have you had your eye on Nigeria? Uh, since when I visited there, I visited there uh, four, four years ago. It's one of the most frightening places I've ever been. Uh, we were up in the area with regard to the Chibok girls. You remember the girls who were kidnapped six six years ago, talked to their families. It's a frightening country. There are Boko Haram is there. It's the third most dangerous country in the world, according to the Global Tourism Index. You also have the Fulani militants, uh, which is an Islamic group. Now, ISIS has moved in, and there are remnants a little bit of of Al-Qaeda. So it is the third most dangerous. More Christians have been killed. Catholics and Protestants are being slaughtered. And frankly, uh, not much is being done by the Western world. That's why I'm pleased that uh, Secretary Pompeo and Ambassador Brownback have really taken this, this action. So goes Nigeria, though. So goes all the Western Africans. Some say all of Africa, because it is the largest country in, in Africa. There are over 200 million people. In 2050, there will be more people in Nigeria than are in the United States. And if this country implodes, and I think it may very well implode, you have genocide, genocide by Boko Haram. You will have millions of Nigerians spreading out into the northern part of Africa, going into Europe and well beyond. And not only that, it's impacting now the surrounding countries. All of the countries in the Lake Chad region, if you recall, a year and a half ago, we lost four American soldiers in, in uh, Dijer. So it is a very serious thing that's going to have a major impact on the world. And I believe the genocide there will be almost similar to what we saw in Rwanda a number of years ago. Well, that is a terrifying thought, Congressman Wolf. Um, I mean, gosh, I don't even know what question to ask you next after a statement like that, because that is so scary and I mean, how likely is it? I mean, you, you you mentioned Nigeria is is the first democracy, so-called democracy, to be included on this list. Where is the government in all of this? Well, the government is fundamentally corrupt. It is corrupt. When we were there, we would go into villages, and they would say, when we came in, they would see the military. They didn't know if they should be happy or they should be sad. It is fundamentally corrupt. There are millions of displaced people there. They're kidnapping for ransom. You remember the Chibok girls six years ago? Remember President Obama? Everyone did hashtag bring back the girls. Only half of the girls would come back. Over six years, half are still with with Boko Haram. You have sexual trafficking all over. You have very little education. So I think it's, it's... Go look at the piece by Bernard Henry Levy. He did in the Wall Street Journal a year ago now. I think almost a year ago this week, he predicted that what took place in Rwanda and Darfur is ready to take place in in Nigeria. It is very serious. The problem is very few media people go. I think our ambassador there has been a fundamental failure. And so since nobody goes and many of the networks have been cut back, you don't find the stories, but... It is one of the most dangerous situations 
in the world. And as Nigeria goes, I believe all of West Africa will go. And if all West Africa goes, you will find millions of refugees scattered all over the world. And it's very brutal. These people live in camps. It's so bad. And as they go outside the camps, Boko Haram is all over the place. The Fulani militants. And to keep in mind the one thing, Boko Haram has killed more people in Nigeria, mainly Christians, Catholic and Protestant, than all the people, all the people that ISIS killed in Iraq and Syria combined. You remember two years ago, all you could pick up the news, ISIS, ISIS, ISIS. No one talks about Boko Haram, and nobody talks about the Fulani militants. And I saw a report today. I think you're going to find Boko Haram probably was responsible for this and the Fulani militants. And these stories of Christians being targeted in, in Nigeria, I mean, they're coming out weekly. I think it's almost daily. You should read a bishop, uh, the, there's a bishop, Kuka, a Catholic bishop, wonderful man. I mean, go look to see what he's been saying. It's almost every day. Now, again, it's not covered very well by the, by, by the West. This is a big story. Got a little blurb in the Washington Post, barely mentioned, a little blurb in different papers. Nobody's covering it because one, it's dangerous. The media doesn't doesn't go there. Two, the American embassy people pretty much stay in the American embassy. They don't travel out through through the region. And so the, the Bishop Cook has been urging uh, uh, the Anglican bishop has been urging many of the people have almost every day. If you get up in the morning, hit the Nigeria latest news. Five out of seven days there'll be a kidnapping, killing, and sometimes it won't just be one. It'll be 12, 15, 30, or, or even more. This one here, there are 300 and some students that are missing as of now. And once they're missing, the longer they're missing, the more difficult it is. And quite frankly, I think it's a corrupt government. So I, I am so grateful that Secretary Pompeo and Ambassador Brownback did, did this, and the Trump administration did this, because now the next administration has to follow through and hold their feet to the fire. If they do not... If they do not, there will be genocide there. And you remember how bad it was in Rwanda. President Clinton felt so bad that he didn't do anything. He flew to Rwanda the closing uh, month or two of his camp- uh, of his election, his uh, service, and said, I apologize for not acting. The same thing will happen here. Congressman Wolf, how can we, you know, just the average American put our government's feet to the fire in order to put Nigeria's feet to the fire and try to stem the tide before it gets even worse. Well, I think everyone listening ought to contact their congressmen and their senators. I don't think there's been a congressman or senator to Nigeria in the last several years. And if anyone did, they fly in Abuja, they spend one night in a five-star hotel, and then they go home. They should ask their congressmen and senators to get involved, to look at the issue. Because the failure of the Congress to deal with this issue will result in, again, I urge your listeners, Wall Street Journal, December of last year, Bernard Henry Levy. Look, it's a full-page op-ed that he says. He is predicting a genocide similar to Rwanda and, and Darfur. And I saw, I mean, I was in Dar, Darfur when the genocide was taking place with Ambassador Brown, Brownback when he was a senator. It is frightening what will take place. And so I think the Congress ought to hold hearings on, on this. The Congress has been silent. The Congress has almost been AWOL. I don't know of anybody. Uh, the one congressman who's been so good, God bless him, is Congressman Chris Smith. He has been yes. a hero on, on, on this. I mean, Chris Smith is... The leader, but other than that, people are quite now. In fairness to the Congress, no one goes. COVID is having an impact; it's very dangerous to go. When you go to the embassy, they don't want you to go up here. They don't want you to go into the northern state. They don't of want you to go not. to Joe's. They don't want you yeah. to go there. So, contact your congressmen and, and senators. And lastly, when you talk to the Christians there, you know one thing they ask you to do: they say, "Please pray for us." And so, I think the leaders in the Western the church or to advocate and speak out for the persecuted Christians. Well, I can assure them that the prayers of the Sunrise Morning Show family are going up for them right now and will continue. We've been talking to Congressman Frank Wolf. If you want to get more information about this, go to indefensivechristians.org. It's linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Congressman, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you very much.